right now is CPA and the Marx Group president, uh, Gene Marx. Gene, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for being hey, Marie, here this morning. What are your thoughts on inflation and the impact uh, this year as we do our taxes with the deadline Monday? You know, it's it's taking a lot of people by surprise. Um, what you're referring to is called bracket creep. So what that means is if during the year, yeah. you know, your employer has increased your wages, which is good, they're doing that just to keep up with your cost of living expenses or inflation. But the tax brackets haven't changed. So many people are finding themselves, many of our clients are being pushed into a higher tax bracket, which means that they're paying more in taxes. So because the federal government hasn't had time to respond to uh, the inflation, which has gone up so much this year, a lot of my clients are coming back to me and finding that they're, they're paying more in taxes this year than they were expected to pay. Yeah. James Freeman, jump in. Yeah, that we remember this was a bigger um, issue. Uh, the last time America had a bout of inflation in the 70s, this was one of the issues uh, Ronald Reagan ran on in 1980. And I'm wondering now, years later, the federal government never solved it. Um, do you see, Gene, states that have done a really good job of, of indexing, of making sure that higher inflation doesn't force people to pay more uh, on, a, on a nominal basis? Un, you know, unfortunately, I'm seeing the, the actually the opposite. Many states have not been keeping up with this, you know, with this indexing. Some of them, like Alabama, their highest income level, their highest tax bracket starts at an income level of three thousand dollars a year, which is like sixty two thousand dollars, you know, in, in current year dollars, because that was passed years and years ago. I, you know, I see the, the states themselves not being so motivated to do it because for them, it's an opportunity to get more tax revenues. So there is a push among some states to adjust this, New York and California in particular, but it's a problem in many states around the country. And I think it's going to result in higher taxes for people probably continued through 2022. Yeah, well, that's what we're expecting. Gene, we've got obviously a little time left before the deadline on Monday. What are the tips that we need to know for last minute filers? OK, Maria, so let's go through them. I mean, I realize the tax deadline is Monday, but you still have a little bit of time here. If you haven't contributed the maximum to your IRA, do it today. An individual can put away $6,000 into your IRA retirement account, $7,000 if you're over the age of 50, and you can take a deduction for that. If you have a health savings account, HSA, at your company, you want to max out on that as well. That's like 3600 bucks for an individual. And if you do that, um, you can take a deduction for that as well. It carries over to next year. You can use it for your, you know, for your health expenses. File your taxes electronically, please, because that will ensure the fastest refund. The IRS is still millions of, of returns behind in their processing, but they are, they're, they're, they're escalating their efforts on e-filed returns. So if you want your refund quicker, make sure you file it electronically. Pay in all of your estimated taxes, for goodness sake. Uh, you want to make sure that you're paid up. And finally, uh, if you still can't get it all together, it's OK. File an extension, and then you can file your final returns by October 15th, at least as long as you've got all of your taxes paid in. Did I get them all in OK? <laughs> yeah, I think you did. But when, you, when you're talking about maxing out your, your IRA, if you have money in your 401K, you work for a company that offers a 401K, your company matches, you can't yep. max out an IRA if you've already done it in your 401k, right? Can't you both if you have an IRA You're absolutely right. as well as a 401k? Yeah, okay. There just are some situations where you can quick. have... Yep. Sure. No, no, I'm just kidding. There are some situations where you can have both a 401k and an IRA deduction, but it's really limited based on your income. So, Marie, you're absolutely right. Mm. It's usually one or the other. But we have a lot of clients so that just have individual IRAs yeah. and they haven't maxed out on them yet. Right. And if you and if you don't have a 401k, you should have an IRA. Real quick on these loopholes that billionaires seem to take advantage of to dodge billions in federal income taxes. We've got a new report from uh, ProPublica that shows the 25 wealthiest Americans collectively earned more than $400 billion from 2013 to 2018, but paid just $13.6 billion. It found that former New York City mayor Michael Bloomberg had one of the lowest tax rates at just over 4 percent. It's amazing to see Bloomberg, you know, being able to pay one of the lowest tax rates and hear him complain yeah. about everybody else, you know, not paying their fair share.
I agree. I, there, there's a number of reasons why. Just so you know, I mean, billionaires make their money off of their investment income and their dividend income, and that's taxed at a lower rate, a capital gains rate, than what you and I are paying ordinary taxes. So that's one reason. Billionaires right. like Bloomberg, though, in his defense, he does give a lot of money to charitable foundations. So he yeah, takes huge true. deductions yeah. for doing that. Yep, they give it away. Yep, great point. Gene Marks, thanks very much for being here this morning. We uh, Happy tax day to you, Gene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, have a Gene great Marks weekend, Marie. I know I won't right. be. Yeah, and to you. <laughs>